Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles is now official for Clash at the Castle, and the match has an added stipulation. On SmackDown this week, it was confirmed that Cody will defend his undisputed WWE Championship against AJ Styles in an I Quit match at Clash at the Castle. The event is taking place from Glasgow, Scotland on Saturday, June 15th. It was streamed live on the Peacock with a special start time of 2 p.m. Eastern. After being duped by AJ Styles and laid out last week, Cody Rhodes was out for payback. He tried to call AJ out to the ring, but security rushed to get between them. AJ demanded that Cody give him a title shot at Clash at the Castle. Cody agreed and announced that it would be an I Quit match. SmackDown General Manager Nick Aldis approved the stipulation. Cody fought through some of the security guards and attempted to brawl with AJ, but the remaining security held him back. AJ then took advantage of the situation by giving Cody a cheap shot. This will be the second ever televised match between Cody and AJ. After AJ lost to Cody at Backlash, Nick Aldis denied him a rematch and said he would have to go to the back of the line. Last week, there was an angle where AJ Styles staged a fake retirement as part of his plan to get another shot at Cody. The updated Clash at the Castle card includes Damian Priest defending his World Heavyweight Championship against Drew McIntyre, the Cody Rhodes AJ Styles I Quit match, the WWE Women's Championship on the line Bailey defending against Piper Niven, Sami Zayn defending his Intercontinental Championship against Chad Gable, and a triple threat match in which Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill are defending their WWE Women's Tag Team Championship against Alba Fire and Isla Dawn and Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. And speaking of Bianca Belair, I had the chance to chat with her in a recent interview where we discussed multiple topics. The first thing we touched on was her new tag team partnership with Jade Cargill and what it has been like for Bianca to go from a singles run to a tag team run. Here's what she had to say. It's different for me because like I said, I've been in the, the singles picture for so long. And you know, when you're doing something by yourself and you're having great matches or you're showing up in great gear, you're having great moments, it's really cool, but when you can have two people doing it at the same time, it makes the impact even bigger. You know, um, I always said that when I was in my singles run, I felt like, especially, you know, I felt like I was here making amazing history, especially like as a black woman. But for a minute, I was like, okay, this is a lot of pressure. So, you know, when Jade showed up and Naomi came back, I'm like, this is what we need. We need diverse representation because representation is so important. But when you have multiple, it makes a bigger impact. So um, that's just the way that I've been looking at it. That's the way that I see it. And I feel like the impact that we're having right now, it's just, it's reaching more and more eyes, not just inside the, the WWE universe, but outside the WWE universe. And that's how we bring more eyes to the product. And that's how we allow um, wrestling and WWE to evolve. Um, I'm so excited about Jade coming in and I'm excited about even the NXT girls that are going to come up and, and come in and, you know, coming out, even the ones that Tiffany, they're coming after me and say, I'm going to take the EST away from you. I'm like, well, listen, this is how we make the division evolve. Let's, let's keep doing this. Records are meant to be broken. People are, are meant to come in and take spots. So not saying anybody's going to take my spot, but no, <laughs> um, all the calls. Additionally, I asked her about Becky Lynch taking time away from WWE. Given their history together, Bianca said she's supportive of Becky's decision. Take a look. Yeah, you know, I'm just super supportive of Becky of, of whatever space she's in right now, what she wants to do. Everyone knows how pivotal Becky was uh, for my career, um, but not just inside the ring, outside the ring. She's someone that I've always been able to go to and um, lean on um, just for advice and just, you know, as a friend, I would say that I would call Becky uh, my friend. Um, she's someone who has stood up for me. She's someone who has led me, who has taught me. Um, we see everything that Becky has done for this division and for, for the women's division, uh, being one of the four horsemen, being one of the women that has mainly been at WrestleMania. Uh, she's, if you read her book, you saw that her, what her goal was to turn this women's division into and I think that she was a huge part of that and she's just so inspiring and from what she's done with her with her title as a uh, NXT champion and how what she did for those women down there what she's done you know with Liv Morgan in the ring what she's done just in general uh she's not a legend in the making she's a legend and I love when Becky is here in WWE um and you know, I, I'm just super excited for her for whatever she wants to do right now. But um, I just, I think that she's the GOAT. I think that she 
she's going to be in the Hall of Fame one day for sure. Um, but I don't see that, you know, that time coming anytime yeah. soon. Um, but no, I'm just super excited for her with uh, where she's at right now. For the full interview, you can check that out on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Denise Salcedo. Moving on. In the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer provided an update on Rhea Ripley's recovery from injury. A shoulder injury forced Rhea to vacate the Women's World Championship this April. Rhea stated at the time that she would be out of action for quite a few months. She cut a promo vowing that when she returned, she would be out for blood and would be coming back for the Women's World title. Dave Meltzer reports that Rhea Ripley has chosen to rehab her injury instead of having surgery. She isn't expected to be back in time for SummerSlam this August, but could possibly make an appearance if the storyline calls for it. SummerSlam is being held in Cleveland on Saturday, August 3rd. Rhea had been feuding with Liv Morgan when she hurt her shoulder. In Rhea's absence, Liv Morgan has won the Women's World Championship. There's an ongoing story where Liv Morgan is attempting to take Dominic Mysterio away from Rhea Ripley. An inadvertent interference by Dominic helped Liv Morgan become champion. Liv Morgan then planted a kiss on Dominic last week. Chad Gable's potential free agency has drawn the attention of both the incumbent WWE as well as AEW. Chad Gable's current WWE deal is set to expire imminently, according to recent reporting by Fightful, unless an extension or a new deal is reached. In this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer reported that WWE had made an excellent offer to keep Chad Gable and that AEW has interest if this deal expires as key people within the company are pushing Chad Gable to Tony Khan. Fightful Sean Ross Sapp stated he has also heard about internal discussions within AEW about Chad Gable, but didn't have an update on the star's current contractual status. The Alpha Academy leader is currently involved in a heavily pushed storyline with WWE Intercontinental Champion Sami Zayn and will challenge Sami for the championship at next weekend's Clash at the Castle. There have been no indications to this point that Gable is leaving. The 38-year-old began in the WWE system in 2013 after signing a developmental deal following his outstanding run as an amateur wrestler and a brief stint on the indie circuit. Chad Gable has held the WWE Raw and SmackDown tag team titles in addition to the NXT tag team titles in his career. Switching gears to some AEW conversation, Wednesday's AEW Dynamite averaged 790,000 viewers on TBS, up 0.4% from last week and the largest total audience for the show since April 10th. Dynamite averaged a 0.28 rating in the 18 of 49 demo. That's up 12% from last week and is also the highest rating the show has done in that category since the April 10th episode. The show had no major sports competition with the NBA Finals starting Thursday night and the NHL Finals not starting until Saturday. This week's show featured the AEW Dynamite return of MJF. Also on Dynamite, Brian Danielson has declared for the AEW Owen Hart Foundation Men's Tournament. In a backstage promo, Brian Danielson announced his intention to enter the 2024 edition of the Owen Hart Tournament, noting that it was his final year as a full-time pro wrestler and that winning the tournament could mean his last chance at winning the AEW World Championship. The tournament was announced at last month's Double or Nothing pay-per-view with the added twist that this year's tournament winners will receive world title shots at All In at Wembley Stadium on Sunday, August 25th. This year's men's and women's tournament finals will be held in Calgary, Alberta, Canada on Wednesday, July 10th. AEW has yet to announce a start date or other participants for this year's tournament. Will Ospreay will defend the international championship against Ray Phoenix on the Wednesday, June 12th AEW Dynamite. The match for next week was made official on Wednesday's Dynamite as Phoenix won a four-way number one contenders match that also featured Jay Lethal, Kyle O'Reilly, and Orange Cassidy. Ray Phoenix pinned Jay Lethal to set up the title belt. In addition to holding the international title, Will Ospreay is the number one contender for the AEW World Championship and will challenge Swerve Strickland for that title at Forbidden Door on Sunday, June 30th. Swerve Strickland defeated Roderick Strong to retain the world title in the main event of this week's Dynamite. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and do not forget to subscribe to F4W Online for plenty more pro wrestling coverage.